Let's pray. pray Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they will have to say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. From the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11, and then verse 17. Joshua 3, 1 through 11, and then verse 17. Reading from the original King James text. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which you must go, when ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. Uh -huh. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee yeah, yeah, in the sight yeah. of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that they that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby shall ye know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the good Jesites, Jesites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. And verse 17 says, and the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord mm -hmm. stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, mm -hmm. and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Amen. Thank Amen. you. You may be seated. With those verses in mind, uh, we want to spotlight verse 17. And the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. I want to talk this morning from the subject facing rivers that seem right. uncrossable. Come right. on, right. Pastor. Right. Facing rivers that seem uncrossable. All right, the nation Israel is experiencing a time of great excitement and anticipation in our text today. You see, after 500 years after receiving the promise from God, and after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, Israel is now on the banks of the Jordan River that flowed between them and the promised land. Long time coming, but now they're on the brink of receiving what God had promised a long time ago to Abraham, 
and reiterated through Isaac and Jacob. That is how it is in our lives when we are on the brink of accomplishing something very special. Uh -huh. We experience excitement uh -huh. and anticipation, mm -hmm. and yet at the same time, it is, there's a certain level of anxiety uh -huh. and concern. Yeah. We are excited and we are anticipating what we're about to accomplish, but at the same time, there is some anxiety and concern because we know that in order to achieve the prize, we must do something. Mm -hmm. and, and oftentimes, what God calls us to do does not appear to be easy. We're on the brink of great accomplishment. Great pastor. Yet there's one more rhythm we have to cross. All right, all right. And then we discover, yes, that in and of ourselves, uh -huh. we don't have what it takes all right, all right. to make it to the other side. All right, off, it, it's down. We know it's there. Because God promised it's there. Uh -huh. It's ours. We know. know it's ours because God promised it. Yes. But when we look at the prize and look at what's between us uh -huh. and the promise, we realize that we can't make it My on our own. We don't have what it takes in and of ourselves uh -huh. to make it to the other side. All right. All right. We find out that in order mm -hmm, to cross some of these rivers, uh -huh. we're going to need God's help. Yes, oh, yes. Amen. You see, the trouble with crossing the Jordan River is that we are facing some problems uh -huh. that we simply cannot solve. Oh, there you go. Yeah, if the young folk got some tests that have to be taken, yes. old folk that have some relationships okay. that have to be reconciled, yes. Yes, yes, and we can say it like this. If it ain't one thing, there's right, another. Right, right. There's something coming all the way, and it just seems like in and of ourselves, we just cannot find a solution uh -huh. on our own. Yeah. Yet we know that to get where God wants us to be, we have to get across all right. the Jordan River. Amen. Yes, that's the way life is uh -huh. in this fallen world yeah. in which we live. I cannot understand for the life of me why so many folk who grew up in church know all about God, but are so in love with this world Yay. that they're content to sit on the other side, all right. the wrong side of joy. Right. Love this world so much mm -hmm. that, that they never realize that one of these days you're going to leave it. If I don't think you love so much, they're going to leave you. All right. All right. All right. All right. Along with our hopes mm -hmm. and joys. There are always problems for which we have neither uh -huh. the strength mm -hmm. nor the wisdom to meet the challenge. Yes. And I'm glad it's that way, Brother Davis, because it keeps me praying. Amen. It, it keeps me praying all the time. It keeps me being mindful of what I say to folks. It keeps me to be mindful of how I treat folks. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, because some things I just can't handle Amen. on my own. But what I'm grateful for right. is that I know how to take it to All right, the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. Yes, because we don't have the strength oftentimes right. or the wisdom to right. handle the challenges that come our way. Come on, Pastor. But I found out that the more that I trust in God, Amen. the easier these problems I'm able to solve. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You just need to know well, your help and your strength All right. and your wisdom yes. come from. All right. There are some things in life we just don't need to be guessing about Amen. or just hoping about. Uh -huh. There are some things we need to know. No. And I'm so glad I can report to you that that's one thing I know. I know, I know where my help come from. comes from. Because even when I can't raise my feet, when I can't lift my feet or raise my arm, I can just look up. I'm not the psalmist, you see. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. All my help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. So whatever I'm dealing with, he made it. Whatever I'm facing, he made it. Whatever trying to block me, he made it. And he made it, he's able to bring me through it. Sure. Yes. Where your help comes from. Oh, this 
chapter teaches Israel and us that the battle mm -hmm. is not, not on. It's the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. You can fight all you want. The best you know here. But if you really want to overcome whatever that river is that's blocking your way, first thing you got to realize is that whatever it is that you're fighting, it's not yours, it's not ours. It's the Lord. But you're not, you first got to know that you're on the right side. Israel didn't just wander up to the banks of the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. They were led there. Guided by Almighty God. Yeah. And you didn't just show up where you are today. All right. All right. Preach out. to this by the power Milo. of the living God. Yeah. So the first thing when we face these rivers, we must prepare mm -hmm. for the cross. It's right there in the text. Mm -hmm. First thing we have to notice in this text. Is the place of the ark of the covenant of the Lord. The ark is one of the most important features of this chapter. Besides God opening the waters up and letting his people pass, over and over again we are reminded of the importance of the ark of the covenant of the Lord. The prominence of the ark is stressed. And another time that is mentioned in this chapter, which is, by the way, nine times, but also by the nature and the commands and the statements that are given in regards to this ark. Mm -hmm. The ark is so important because it represented the person and the promises of God. All right. God says, I'm not just sending you. Free, Pastor. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not just sending you a leader, I'm going with you. All right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And even Jesus told us in this present age, and Lord, I'll be with you always, right. even to the end right. of the world. So God, the ark Free that God. gives me a mother, that's a river uh -huh. that you can't get crossed by yourself, and that's the beginning to go there that you know you can't be. Yeah. But I am with you. My presence is represented by the ark of the covenant. You know, some of us used the same thing a long time ago. You ought to take the Lord with you yes. everywhere you go. Amen. You know, some of us, we just want to take him to church right. and to the house and go to everywhere else on our own. But it says in the streets, right. in the crowd, right. in your home, all alone, right. you ought to take the Lord with you Everywhere you go. Amen. If you take him into an old meeting with you, you won't come out feeling so confused and right. upset. Yeah. Take him with you. Amen. This art represented the precious, amen, and the promise of God. As God said, All right. I believe it. I believe. And that's something. All right, now. I don't know how he's going to do it. Do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. But one thing I know, if God said it, right. he's going to do it. Yes, sir. The ark pointed to the fact that the people of Israel, as they set out to cross the Jordan and possess the land, come on, come on. they must not do so in their own strength. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, right. remember the text. If God sent you to do it, then you are not doing it on your own. You can't do it on your own. Right. They understood that if they were going to cross this Jordan, it was going to take some supernatural power. If they're going to displace the enemy, it's going to take some supernatural help. And so they must not do so in their own strength, but in God's strength. Yeah. But it is God himself who was going before them as their source of victory. Right. In other words, you still may have to fight the battle. All right. But we as believers in Christ fight the battle with the uh, knowledge and assurance that the victory mm -hmm. is already won. All right. Amen. I'm going to just be honest with you. There's a few of us believe that. Amen. A lot of us confess it and say it. But a few of us possess it. Because when he's the source of victory, and he is, he's the source of victory in everything that we encounter in this life, including sickness, suffering, and death. He does not leave us in God. He's in the with us. Amen. And he gives us what we need mm -hmm. to overcome. Amen. Uh, my love. <laughs> mm. 
We know this. And we believe it. But we still won't come to church. <laughs> Preach real. We still try to do it on our own. All right. We still try to do it with what they tell us. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. And we already know the source of victory. Come on, Pastor. That is really the way it is with all of our lives. God gives us some things to Him that we know in our heart of hearts that we don't have what it takes to handle it on our own. Don't care how many degrees you got, how much experience you got, how smart you think you are. He gives us some things to handle and deal with, and it just takes faith in Him to get the job done. Because no matter how much training, knowledge, and experience you have, you still don't know it all. All right. Yeah, listen to what Paul said as he considered the challenges and the triumphs of his ministry. He asked a question. He says, and who is adequate for these things? What human man can do all these things? What human man can get locked up just for preaching? Whip just for preaching? Stone just for preaching? Shipwrecked up for preaching. What? Who is adequate for these things? He answered by saying, This is what he said, and such confidence we have through Christ for God. All right. We know God's Son. We know God. So even though we know that we're not adequate, we are confident in Christ. Lord God, not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves. We know we can't do it. But our adequacy, we can do it now because our adequacy is from God. That's why he was saying that all. I can do all things. Right. Somebody about to get this. Yes, I sir. can do all. I, I know I used to couldn't do it by myself. I know I couldn't have made it. God had helped me. But I found out that I can do all things. Through Christ. Who strengthens me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, sir, what you want to about Paul, do what you want to with Paul. But you can't stop that force, that irresistible power that's working within me. Because it comes from God himself through his son, Jesus Christ. All right. Freak, Pastor. Milo. So, yeah, you don't have to tell me I'm not adequate. I already know it. <laughs> but my adequacy, I can still stand and take it. Yes, sir. Right. Because my adequacy is of God. Amen. I don't get up on Sunday morning to tell you what my things are, what God's will. All right. Got to say. Tell you what the Word of God says. Amen. Yes, yes, you have to be prepared. To cross these rivers. Mm -hmm. You don't just wind up to these rivers and get across. All right. Second thing, you have to be consecrated. Mm -hmm. Consecrated. The people were consecrated. Look at verses 5 and 6. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. All right. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Amen. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Yes, you see, you see what yes, God promises. Sometimes his promises are unconditional. Uh -huh. He just tells us we believe him uh -huh. and it's done. But sometimes when he tells us to do something, uh -huh. he tells us the order in which he wants it done. Amen. If it doesn't happen in that order, guess what? It's not going to get done. Amen. And even when we do it right according to God's plan and purpose, we're not hurting anything of God. We're just showing our faith by putting our faith in action. When God's people who really believe what he says start acting on what they believe, then that's a powerful thing taking place. So God is going to do wonders among you. He won't do wonders among you when you don't sanctify, set yourself apart. When you still think it's all about you, then it is all about you. And it will fail sooner or later. Can't be about us. Yeah, yeah. Jesus 
told you that. If any man would come after me, let him first deny himself. Take up his cross. They can't be about you. And take up your cross. Then follow me. Consecrate yourself. In verse 5, I ain't going to like this one. In verse 5, Joshua commanded the people to consecrate themselves in view of the wonders that God will work among them mm -hmm. the next day. Keep yourself up. You know, that's the 20 when they got ready to go up to Mount Sinai. They told him, you know, wash your clothes, put on clean clothes, and mm -hmm. get right and go stand by the mountain, get you close and all that. Mm -hmm. It's not really about exterior hygiene and cleaning, though. It, it, it's about what's going on on the inside. Amen. Amen. Confess your sins to Christ. Right. Ask him to forgive me. Turn your hearts over to him. Yes. And he'll lead you. He won't let you wander anymore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My Lord. See, God wants to work wonders. Yes. But you got to bring something All right. to him Amen. in faith, through Amen. faith. Amen. Not that he needs our help, by the way. I know some of y'all think that the church won't go unless you in the middle of it. Say it again. But it's Christ. <laughs> the church is the body of Christ. And it's all about him. Yes, sir. Amen. So, 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 the word consecrate, let's look at that word for a minute. In the Hebrew language, uh-huh, it can be used to mean to set apart. All right. To prepare. To dedicate. Is that asking too much? You want him? And I believe it for to give us a home in eternity and glory. But yet we want to live like we down already down here. And don't want to Suffer not sacrifice. Right. Yes, he says, to set apart, prepare, dedicate. But the use of the word in this text simply means to set yourselves apart, prepare yourselves. Mm -hmm. Simply put, confess your sins to Christ. Ask him mm -hmm. to forgive you yeah. and be sincere. Mm -hmm. And he will. In other words, God is going to do the work. Amen. But this calls for personal responsibility. Amen. Personal responsibility. Free for God's people, oh, I wish I had a in church. Right. For right. God's people, yeah. spiritual preparation yeah. is a vital element but it is, it is by being rightly related to God that brings the power of God on our life and on our ministry. My Lord, my Lord. Oh, what did he say? I say it again. For God's people, come on, brother. Spiritual preparation is the vital element, but it is by being rightly related to God that brings the power of God on all the work and on our ministry. In other words, it doesn't matter how eloquently you speak, how strongly you preach, all right. how wonderful you sing, how long or how hard you pray, or how much good you think you're doing on your own. You must first be rightly related to God. And the only way to rightly relate to God is to believe in His Son, Jesus the Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. You can't really know the Father until you learn to know the Son. Come on, Pastor. Joshua said, Help us, Pastor. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Yes, sir. That don't be enough to make somebody shout. He, he said, tomorrow, yeah. the Lord right. yeah. will do wonders yeah. among you. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Uh-huh. A weak nation freed out of Egypt, led out of wandering for 40 years, and now you're at the brink of promise, and God is going to do wonders for you to follow. Right. But today, you need to sanctify yourself. Yeah. He's going to do wonders mm -hmm. among you, not the Canaanites, not the Hittites, right. not the Perizzites, hey. not the Jebusites, not the Amorites, not the Jebusites. He's going to do wonders among you. All right. Not the world of Christ, not the gangbangers, no, not the evil doers. Not the ones who are in love with the power of this world. Yeah. He's going to do wonders among you. But today, my Lord, my Lord. you need to sanctify yeah. yourself. Yes, sir. To prepare yourself for what God is going to do for you. 
Come on now. Woo! All right. Joshua said it. Where there is a lack of consecration to confession of our sins, all right, all right. along with commitment, listen to this, to God's purposes for all of us in service of ministry. If we don't have that consecration, we hinder the power of God. Yes, you have to have your mind made up. Yes, you're going to lose some folk that you love and you don't love you. Yes, you got to walk away from some things that you probably been entangled with a, a long time. Yes, but you must totally consecrate yourself, set yourself apart to be used by Almighty God. Yes, sir. I'll come back to that. All right. <laughs> but there is more included here and this call for consecration, for dedication, for separation. The people of Israel were to expect God. Uh-oh. Miss Angela, I'm going to be the only two, Miss Barbara. Right, <laughs> they must expect God yeah. to work a miracle. Preach, preach. Huh? I, I, I don't pray saying, Lord, I, I'm not going to do it. I think you're going to do it. Yes, because sir. I'm going to act what's in your way. I'm going to act what's in your will. I'm going to act what's in your way. I'm going to act what's in your way. So it's not that. Preach, God. Yeah, preach. I expect God. Yeah. Preach. And every now and then, Brother Daisy, he'll hit me with one and I give you the respect. God to do something wonderful. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. And when you consecrate yourself, he'll do it. Yes, he will. He'll let the enemy get right up on you. Yes, and you'll let him fall down. <laughs> Preach. Preach, <laughs> Pastor. But the church should be expecting great things. That's right. But, Pastor, why are we expecting great things? Well, I'll answer the question for you. Where are you today? I know where you are. Well. Mm -hmm. Milo. Mm -hmm. I'm going on. Israel was not to lose sight of that God who can do the incredible and what is impossible for man to do in his own and only his own. And God all right. Israel was not to lose sight. Mount Lebanon, any true believer today, don't lose sight of our God who can do the incredible and what is impossible for man to do on his own or in his own. I wonder if there's anybody here today uh, who has come just to expect God to do something incredible uh, and exciting. Uh, for you, uh, yeah. ain't he all right? Uh, yes. He's good for you, uh, but first you've got to believe in him, uh, and then you've got to expect him. Uh, yes, uh, I remember uh, a conversation with the doctor one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, and when he told me at first, uh, kind of made me sad, uh, but something on the inside uh, got excited uh, about that God, uh, and that the God uh, Then 
he, and he uh, and a little while preparation uh, and then dedication uh, when we talk about preparation uh, we are reminded uh, that all of God uh, is uh, a holy God yes yes we are reminded of God's holiness you got to know today he used this worthless people like us but don't ever lose sight of the fact all right. That the God we serve, I don't know, He is a, right. a holy God. Yeah. God is absolute holiness, completely set apart from sin. Don't you know uh, He cannot uh, have fellowship uh, with sinful man uh, or allow sin in His presence uh, without a solution uh, to the problem uh, of sin? Pastor, you can't let a sinner stand before him until some preparation has been made on behalf of that sinner. Somebody gets it. It brings us to the necessity of sacrifice for sin, which is accomplished by Jesus Christ dying on the cross at Calvary. That's why the Hebrew writes are now we can boldly approach the Phone of grace and ask for help in our time of need because now we can fellowship with them because the preparation for our sin problem has been dealt with through Jesus Christ. Amen. What can uh, wash away my sins? Uh, nothing uh, but the blood uh, of, of Jesus. Jesus. Uh, what can make me uh, whole again? Uh, nothing uh, but the blood uh, of Jesus.
Yeah, I know everybody's sitting around talking, I got this idea, I got that idea. And two or three folks going along with me, you know, this is what God wrote. Uh -huh. So God speaks to his preacher. Somebody picks out a leader. Thanks, God, right here. Here's by the word of God. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach up to be sick? Preach. I didn't just show up. All right. Amen. 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 I was going my own way. My own way was leading to my destruction. But I called on the Lord. And he heard my friend. Yes, sir. And I'm going to pick and choose where I go anymore. Where he leads. I go. I follow. Because it's not about our purpose. It's God's purpose. Yes, it is. I'm not like to live a little more comfortable when I'm doing God's work. It meant they were to set themselves apart to Yahweh, that Hebrew name for Jehovah, to cross the Jordan so that they could enter the land uh -huh, and defeat the enemies and become a testimony to the nations. God's people doing God's purpose, doing the impossible. They're going to go across the Jordan River with no boats, all right. no water equipment, okay. all right. All right. weren't good swimmers. Right. They were going to go across and then defeat the enemy with armies who had won victory after victory. Right. Yes, and God is going to help them do all of this because it's God's purpose and God is going to use them okay. to become a testimony right. to the nation. Now, when you're back on an individual level, think about uh, don't think about anybody but yourself. Uh, when God uh, brought you from, uh, what God uh, brought you through uh, and brought you to a place uh, many folks thought they'd never see you, uh, but yet God brought you uh, anyhow. Uh, he brought you uh, to be a testimony. He brought you uh, not for them to stand up and tell folks how good you are. He brought you so you can stand before folks and tell them. I'm just 
out your way. We have committed ourselves to God's purpose. So now, we have also believed God's promise. We bring it to my last point. I'm getting out your way. The last point is, whatever God promises, whatever God purposes, rather, and whatever God promises, God performs. Y'all roll your eyes at somebody and tell them whatever it is that God purposes. And whatever it is that he promises, yes, sir. he performs. He's not like us. He doesn't say one thing and then do another. He does just what he said. Solomon said not one promise that God made that he did fulfill. Everything happened just the way. He said that in wood. Right. That's the way it is in my life. I don't know about you. Right. Right. The commanders of Israel right. and the people obeyed Joshua uh -huh. and proceeded to march to the river Jordan. Right. You see, sometimes you just got to follow leadership. Amen. Sometimes you just got to obey. Sometimes. God's commandments, you see, are his enablements. Mm -hmm. when, he, when he commands you to do something, if you believe and trust him, he automatically gives you the enablement to, to perform the act. You don't, don't, don't start looking at what they're doing. Don't start looking at what they're saying. You just pay attention to the God who spoke to you and made the promise. But when you believe him and say, yes, Lord, I go. When the commandment came to enablement, you are having a witness. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Since it was the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant, and since it was the ark that represented God's person and power, right. they alone were to take the ark uh, to the edge of the water uh, and go out into the water uh, according to God's command uh, and did uh, just stand still. Uh, thank God all right. Uh, that was an order. You see, God doesn't do anything out of order. He does things decently. Uh, in order, huh? Joshua tell the commanders huh? to tell the people huh? get in formation huh? and march down to the banks. Huh? Keep your distance huh? from the priest huh? who are carrying the ark. Huh? And when you get to the real side, huh? stay back huh? and let the priest huh? with the ark huh? be the first one huh? to set foot huh? in the water. Huh? You gotta behave because you're gonna go out there and stand still in the midst of the river Jordan. And as long as you do what God told you, the way God told you, the longer you stand out there, that water that used to come down gonna stand up, and the water that came from the low gonna be cut off. Just as long as you just stand there. God, all right, uh, this reminds us uh, of our part uh, in the plan of God. Uh, we must learn uh, to step out uh, on faith uh, and obedience uh, to the principles uh, and the promises uh, of God's word uh, as it is revealed uh, in the Holy Scripture. Uh, we need to always uh, be assured uh, by the promises uh, God, uh, God didn't tell them uh, like some of us do uh, when you get to the water. Uh, just run on down there uh, and get in the water. Uh, that's not what he told them. Uh, he said, no, uh, just let the priest uh, who are carrying the ark uh, watch them. Uh, let them walk uh, out in the middle of the water uh, and then uh, stand still. Uh, I can see them. Uh, First one foot, uh, first two feet, uh, get the water, uh, water that was coming down rolled up, uh, and the water that was going from the deep cut off, uh, and then walked uh, out in the middle uh, of the Jordan uh, and stood still. Uh, it's like to remind them, uh, as it reminds me uh, of Moses uh, at the Red Sea, uh, surrounded. Uh, the mountain uh, and Pharaoh's army uh, charging at him. Uh, the people were tempted uh, to run in the water, uh, but I heard uh, Moses say, uh, Stand still, stand still, uh, and see the salvation uh, of the Lord. Ain't he alright? Yeah. Ain't he alright? Yeah. Pharaoh got 
That's all we got. I got one more.
Church on this post Sunday. See you all next Sunday. Have a good day.